I want you to know from the bottom of my heart the thanks that every one of us uh, owe to you for the service and the years that you have provided us, and we very much thank you for your, uh, for your service. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Just sit down and relax. We've got a ways to go. <laughs> Usually I turn this podium this way, and I only have to worry about 12 people. But today, I see we have a full house. You know, when I started this job back in 1967, uh, I started out, I think, um, <clears throat> when the population to get into statistics was about 15,000. Today, of course, it's nearly 27,000. We've tripled the size of the city with the annexation wars of the 70s and the 80s and the recent large annexations out on the east and the northeast side. Uh, <clears throat> you know, to give you a little perspective of what it was like growing up in Stevens Point, you know, when I started here, we had two stop and go lights. Now that's the vernacular that was used in those days. We had a stop and go light at Division and Main Street where I lived, and we had another one on Clark and Division. That was it. I haven't counted them since, but in any event, time moves on. You know, I've had the pleasure of working with nine mayors, four treasurers, two comptrollers, five clerks, and over 100 alder persons over the last 46 years. I think I'm either the fourth or possibly the fifth, the records don't quite indicate, city attorney that the city has had in the last 113 years. Um, you know, I, I wanna say a special thank you to the city staff. Uh, they're very special because really they do most of the work. Uh, I thank you, I thank your subordinates because they're the people that you see day to day. You don't see what I'm doing. You don't see necessarily what the comptroller is doing. You see them, and they are the people that make this city work. Uh, I'm proud to say also that I never worked for a mayor out of those nine mayors that didn't really think he was acting in the benefit of the city, even though his idea may not have been very popular with the electorate or some of the electorate thought that his idea maybe was misguided. But again, every mayor that I've worked for really thought he was doing what he was doing because he thought the city was going to ultimately benefit from it. I think though the, mo the thing I'm the most proud of, even though I had not that much to do with it, but. I used to represent the school board. We had a city school district here. And we had a fiscal board that ran it and a school board that ran the day-to-day -day operation, but the money came from the people that sat right where you are with this turned around that way some 40 years ago. And in that regard, and when I think of this era which has just a tinge in this city, but not nationally, of anti-education sentiment, this city and the financial board built without any referendum or any real squabbling. All of it was done in this room and this room right here that used to be here before the days of open meeting when we would take a recess, walk in here and say, this is what it's going to be. And the alder persons uh, and the finance directors would come to some sort of consensus, come back out. And you know, even though I understand that may not fly today, it did work. And I'll tell you how it worked for education. We built SPASH, which was I think 14 million bucks without one gripe. We built Ben Franklin with no problem. We built um, the school across the way, Jackson the elementary school of Jefferson, we redid that one. We built Madison, we built McKinley, all at a time when there were, there were tough times during some of those periods in the 70s when the stock market, when the, the general um, 
uh, employment situation was not good. Why? Because people really thought the most of one thing. We have to educate our children. And I can say that <clears throat> the work I did on it, the technical work and the like, working out the arrangements with the nuns up on the hill who were very graceful to gracious to allow us to buy that land from them that was originally the order of uh, Third Order of St. Francis who owned that particular site and granted it to the city. Um, I want to talk about zoning. I just added that tonight. You know, back in the 1970s, this community was originally zoned mainly for uh, commercial and what we called multifamily. So where I grew up across the street from the courthouse here, and then on Main Street, those were uh, areas of town that were all zoned multifamily, which means, and which meant, uh, a good example of that was the intersection of Clark Street with Division Street. You'll see the Stevens House on the corner. It's all residential, and then there's this large apartment that was put in there. Why? Because it was zoned multifamily. So we had a, a community development director who's still around. He worked for the county for a while as a form of a supervisor. It was Dave Medin. And I worked to down zone about a third of the central, the old part of the city here, uh, to either duplex or in some cases some single family. Frankly, this stopped the proliferation of the what we call the student rentals. Uh, however, I think there needs to be more, there has to be more accomplished in regard to that. Number one, I know that Omni was against this. I spoke to the gentleman at the time, but frankly, we need the big area near the university and the large <coughs> open areas near the university to be developed as student housing. Why? If you look, if you go to Madison, where do you see the towers? Right downtown on, on University Avenue at the end. And those house students. I live, I won't say what a former mayor called the area, but um, in the central city, and I have a student rental across the street. I have one, one house over down the block. And um, we live with them. But I would say that I was a student once um, with, with who had a great time at school. Uh, the, it's tough being having students next to a single family house, maybe with children who go to bed at, at 7.30 at night and there's hooting and hollering next door and the disturbance. And to them it isn't that you know, it really isn't that bad, but it is to, in some of these 50-foot lots in the city. I'm saying those, those old rentals can be refurbished. The classic example is Ann Arbor, Michigan. You go to that city, those houses that are reconditioned next to the university with single-family people, and my nephew used to live in one, those are two, three $300,000 houses no nice, not any nicer than any house, let's say, on, on Strong's Avenue or Water Street. And that's what they command as single family houses to walk into that university. So they can, something can be done in that. And I would, I would also indicate that I think uh, Michael at one time has proposed that we do make some loans to rehab some of these houses to put single family people back in. We do have trust funds for that. You know, I've had the benefit of working as a city attorney and acting as a private attorney for over 40, actually 46, 47 years for that. Um, you know, this really introduced me to what I call the real world and then the governmental world. They are entirely different. Uh, you know, as I exit, I want to thank the city residents who provided me with funds to support 
my family, provided me with an insurance policy that um, has basically provided for the healing of my family. And a final note, frankly, your generosity in my retirement fund is greatly appreciated. <laughs> uh, am I retiring? No, and I have that underlined here. Maybe I should have said that louder, no. I'm simply moving down one block to my office that I've had all this time the last year. Um, and again, enter into the practice of law uh, as I had for the previous 45 years. You know, I'm reminded of Alfred Lord Tennyson's poem, Ulysses. You'll remember Ulysses was the um, individual in the Trojan Wars, the individual who traveled the Mediterranean on all the, all the uh, explorations and all the mythological stories you read as a kid. Um, I know you remember Ulysses uh, in, in Lord Tennyson's poem. He decries the idea of simply sitting around by his hearth, frankly doing little of anything. He indicates to his friends, you know, let's continue life. And he states how dull it is to pause, to make an end, to rust unburnished. Remember, he had armor and the like. Not to shine in use, and though to breathe were life. He goes on to say, and this gray spirit yearning to, in desire to follow knowledge like a sinking star beyond the utmost bound of human thought. And I'm just paraphrasing here a bit. Come, my friends, tis not too late to seek a newer world. Push off. And setting well in order, smite the surrounding furrows, for my purpose holds to sail beyond the sunset. Can't see. And the baths of all the western stars until I die. And with that said, I want to thank my fellow city employees for the benefits you've bestowed on us. I want to thank all the residents of the city of all the benefits they've bestowed on myself. And I did give them something, I hope, in return. Thank you.